Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're going to look tonight at the five-step prayer model. And I'll explain what that is. I'll explain um, the process. Uh, obviously, it's not the only way you can pray for the sick. Uh, but we'll talk about this as we go through. Now, first of all, um, the gospel of the kingdom places a strong emphasis on physical healing. And about, uh, you know, a, about a third of Jesus' recorded ministry in the gospels is physical healing, praying for the sick, doing miracles. Um, and about a third is deliverance as well. And, and so, you know, you see that Jesus, as he ministered, physical healing and deliverance were big parts of that. And here's a scripture that I've given you guys, Matthew 4.23. Now, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Amen. So we see that not only did he preach the gospel of the kingdom, but he demonstrated it. Okay. Here's a quote from Alexander Venter. Um, and he wrote, Jesus' goal was to impart and transfer his kingdom ministry to his followers through training and deploying them. In fact, it was not only the impartation of of kingdom authority and skills, but to entrust the kingdom itself to his followers. Okay, Jesus' desire, I mean, we understand we've taught on the kingdom, that he was bringing the kingdom to earth, he was bringing the kingdom of heaven, but he was also entrusting his, the kingdom to his people, Okay, uh, that we would be stewards of what he's giving us. Now, although much of Jesus' ministry revolved around praying for physical healing, he empowered his disciples to do the same. Okay? And we know a big part of what Jesus did was disciple and train his followers. And not just the twelve. There was an extended group that he trained. And, and as we look later, he commissioned them to do everything that he did. Okay? He gave them a model of what it looked like uh, to minister. So he did this. First of all, he did it with the twelve the original 12 um, apostles, the original 12 disciples. And in, uh, here in Matthew chapter 10, verses 1, verses 5, and verses 7 through 8, He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. These 12 Jesus sent out and commandeered them, saying, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Okay. So Jesus initially, he commissions his original 12. And he says, okay, I have freely given you this. You go, you preach the kingdom. You preach the kingdoms at hand. You preach this and then you demonstrate. Okay. Now, it wasn't just the 12, Okay, because there are um, some teachings out there that only the original 12 or only... Uh, those who were originally with Jesus were to do this. But then he commissions the 70, okay? And he does this in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and verses 9. And it says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also. And then he said to them, And heal the sick who were there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. So it wasn't just the 12. It was the 70, Okay. Now, you know, and then it even goes beyond that, okay? Jesus, it wasn't just those who walked with Jesus in his earthly ministry, but in commissioning accounts in the New Testament, he commissioned his followers to train and teach others and equip them to do the same things that he had taught, okay? And so his, his commission to believers to pray for the sick goes far beyond just those that walked him with him during his early ministry in the years following. And we know that in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and I don't have that here, but let me just go ahead, let me just go ahead and read that to you guys. Very familiar scripture, but let's read it. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, 
and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Okay, so Jesus is saying from this point forward, you go and everything that I taught you, everything that I equipped you, including preaching the kingdom and demonstrating the kingdom and what you freely received, what you're freely giving out, you teach others to do the same, okay? Um, even to the end of the age, I'm with you to do this, okay? So it wasn't just the, oh, those that walked with Jesus, but he's commissioning others, to, to, uh, his disciples to train others to do the same. He said to them, and this is in Mark 16, chapter, uh, verses 15 and 17 through 18, he said to them, and this is another one of the commissioning accounts. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay. So the only limitation, you know, Jesus didn't say, just these that walked with me on my, in my earthly ministry. He said, you know, you go and you preach the gospel and this sign will follow everybody who believes. Not just apostles, right? Not just prophets. The only condition is those who believe, okay? So, and the church, we as the church today, and those that we disciple and commission, the church has been commissioned to pray for the sick and train others to do the same, okay? All right. Now, I mentioned the five step prayer model, and that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. And, uh, and again, it's only one method of prayer that can be used, okay? Um, it was initially developed by John Wimber. And you guys are familiar with John Wimber, uh, the guy who started the, the vineyard movement, okay? Then that's still going on today. It's also, it's the primary method used by Dr. Randy Clark in Global Awakening, okay? Uh, here's a quote from Dr. Randy Clark. He wrote, the five-step prayer model should not be looked at from a mechanical point of view. It is a relational process, and it is most appropriate to use when praying for others in a pastoral context. Okay? And so this is, um, you know, this Saturday as Global Harvest, we're doing prayer rooms, um, healing rooms, and the five-step prayer model really works well in this context. Okay? Um, when, when uh, you, you know, you can... Uh, not only can you, you, you take a little bit of time, it doesn't demand a lot of time, but it's very relational, okay? It's probably not something that you're going to do very quickly, um, but you can limit it. But I, I like it because um, it works, it's effective, and it is relational. So let's look at this together. So just to list before we, we break the parts down, uh, there are five parts. First, number one is the interview, okay? The second part is the prayer selection. The third part is the actual prayer ministry itself. Uh, the fourth part is to re-interview. Okay. And then finally, the last is post-prayer suggestions. Okay. All right. So let's look at these. Let's break these down individually. Okay. Uh, the first one is the interview. Okay. So when you go to pray for somebody, whether it's like in a, a, a healing room setting or you're, uh, you're ministering to people at the end of a service on a Sunday morning, you know, like we have prayer teams, or you're in a conference and, um, you know, they have an altar call for people that need prayer for sickness and healing, and you're on that team, this model works well for that. And so the first thing that you're going to do is briefly interview the person, okay, uh, and you're, that's come to re, re asking for prayer. And so do things like ask his name, ask her name. You know, it's important to make a connection with someone. You know, let that person know when they're coming um, that you're, you're building a relationship with them, even though it may be a short amount of time, okay? Know their name, know who they are, okay? They're not just a number. They're, they're here to receive ministry. They're here not only to receive prayer for healing and hopefully uh, get healed, but be touched by the love of the Father. Okay? That's very, very important. And so you're building relationship with them, even though it may not be 
uh, a long amount of time. Okay? Um, ask them what they would like prayer for. Okay? Ask how long this person's had this condition. And ask them if they've been to a doctor, and if so, what have the doctor said? Okay? Don't be afraid of a doctor's diagnosis. It, will actually, it could actually help you pray more effectively. Okay? Um, and we see that Jesus himself did this. Okay? And uh, let's, let's just turn. I've listed this here, but let's turn to Mark 9.21. Mark 9.21. And we've got uh, this, uh, this child that's been brought to Jesus. Uh, he's possessed with a spirit that makes him mute. Um, he has Caesars. He falls to the ground. Um, and so uh, the disciples bring him to Jesus. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. So, you know, Jesus is making a relational connection with the father. But he's also interviewing the father so that he, uh, he's looking for the root cause of the boy's sickness. Okay? And in this case, it was an afflicting spirit. Okay? But he's looking for that root. And again, possible roots would be, as I just said, like in this case, an afflicting spirit. It could be a sickness rooted in the soul. Okay? Um, it could be a, a sickness or an injury called, caused from... Uh, from natural causes like an accident, an injury, um, someone's lifestyle choices, uh, or some type of disease. Okay, and you're going to find that out as you uh, as you interview interview them. Now, as you're doing this, also be really sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, He may give you a word of knowledge. Okay. And we've talked about the different ways to receive words of knowledge. We, we may talk about that more later. Um, but, but pay attention. You, you, may, you, know, you may see a picture. You may have the Holy Spirit speak something to you. Um, you may sense the presence of an afflicting spirit. You know, I shared a story that uh, uh, several years ago. Um, that hadn't been a long time ago, but Susan Starr was here. And uh, Susan prayed for me and, uh, for an impartation. And minutes after she prayed for me, a guy came forward for prayer. And um, I won't say what the issue was, but as we began to pray for him, I, <laughs> I heard the demonic spirit growl. You know, and I was, I was like, did anyone else hear this? You know, um, but and I, I, I literally thought it had come in over the loudspeaker. That's how clear it was. Uh, but, but God was giving me a word of knowledge. I mean, He was revealing for the discerning of spirits that what this guy's root cause was. Um, so the Holy Spirit may do that. Be sensitive to that and, and expect that to happen. Okay? Expect the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Okay? Um, you know, or, you know, he may, the Holy Spirit may highlight issues of unforgiveness that need to be addressed. You know, if, if you're, you know, you're talking to someone, maybe you're talking to a pastor that, you know, he's had back pain for the last five years and you're talking to him about it. And he's like, well, you know, this was five years ago when it started. And you're like, well, what, what happened five years ago? Well, you know, I had a, there was a split in my church and, um, <laughs> you know, you may realize, oh, there may be some issues of unforgiveness. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit will connect the dots uh, and He'll help you as you're doing this interview, okay? Another thing that you need to do, if it's appropriate, is build faith in uh, when you're interviewing the person. You know, if He says, oh, you know, I have, um, I don't know, I have arthritis really bad and you're like, oh man, we just prayed for somebody a couple of months ago and their arthritis was healed. Okay? When it's appropriate, share testimonies like that because that's going to build people's faith. Okay? Um, now, one thing that Dr. Randy Clark does is he tells people that about 50% of people who are healed feel a physical manifestation. Okay? Such as um, 
electricity, tingling, or coolness when he prays. Okay? Or heat. That says heal, but it should be heat. Okay? Um, but again, don't, don't get hung up on manifestations. Because, like I said, 50% feel manifestations when they receive prayer. But there's 50% that often don't. And I've heard reports of some of the greatest miracles happened without someone feeling any type of manifestation. Okay? Um, but, you know, prepare the people for that. They may uh, feel that. And, you know, if, you, if someone starts feeling that, their, their faith is probably going to increase. Okay? Um, another thing that's important to know, and we've touched on this before as well, as we've talked about deliverance, if pain gets worse, and this is a quote again from Randy Clark, don't be discouraged. That means it's caused by an afflicting spirit. The increased pain tips us off. But if that's the case, don't worry. If you spot them, you've got them. Okay. So yeah, you know, and if you've probably done very much um, prayer, praying for the sick, you're going to experience this. Okay. And you guys have heard me share, you know, in recent weeks again. Uh, when Jamie, my wife, some of the health issues she had, and uh, you know, when I would start praying for her years ago, and her pain would get worse or it would move around her body, and she'd tell me, "Stop praying for me. You're making it worse," which really built up my faith. Um, you know, but but she had a spirit of infirmity, and we didn't know. We didn't know how to deal with it. It was much later when we went to a few years later when we went to Japan and. You know, we begin to learn that, you know, it, you can pray for something, but if you're not dealing directly with a, an afflicting spirit or a spirit of infirmity, um, it's probably not going to go, okay? Now, it might, but most likely not. So, you know, if, you, if that starts happening, that's alerted. You're, you're alerted to the fact that that's what's going on. Um, share testimonies of similar conditions healed when appropriate, and that can build faith among everyone involved. If you've got a prayer team that's working with you, if you're leading the team, and you, you know, you're sharing a testimony about someone that got healed, that's not only going to increase the person's faith that you're praying for, but it's also going to increase your team's faith. Okay, so it's important. It's important to build people's faith up, not with hype. Okay, but we know that testimony just does something, right? All right, so that's the interview, okay? Um, next, you're going to have this, the next section is your prayer selection, okay? Now, there are two types of prayer generally used in prayer ministry, and these are petitions and commands, okay? Now, a petition is a request to heal addressed to God, to Jesus, or to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Here's some examples of some petitions. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to restore healing to this ear, or restore hearing to this ear. Holy Spirit, come and release your power. Touch John's back in Jesus' name. Okay? Those are good prayers. Okay? But there's also, uh, a, there's also, in addition to petitions, there's a, a command, okay? And a command is addressed to a condition of the body, to part of the body, or to, or to a spirit such as pain, infirmity, or affliction. Now, honestly, this is probably how Jesus normally prayed, okay? And we see a lot of examples of this in Scripture, um, he, he, when he was praying for the sick, uh, in, or the demonic. Okay? Mark chapter 1, verse 25. Jesus said, be quiet and come out of him. Okay? He didn't say, Father, I ask you to deal with this demon. I ask you to deal with this spirit. Jesus took authority. Okay? Um, there are other times as well, Mark, like in Mark 2, 11, when Jesus was praying for a paralyzed man, Jesus said, I tell you, get up, Take your mat and go home. Okay. Uh, Luke 5.13, when he was praying for a man with leprosy, Jesus said, Be clean 
and the leprosy left him. Okay? So Jesus often uh, prayed for the sick by commands. Okay? Um, so a command is also appropriate um, when a word of knowledge has been given. Okay? Let's say that you're in a meeting and um, the person ministering calls out, uh, you know, God says that he's going to heal um, deaf ears, right? Especially right ears that are deaf. Okay? And you're on the ministry team and, you know, people start coming up and responding to that prayer request. And somebody comes in, in your line and they're like, and you're like, okay, what's your name? What do you have need of? And they're like, well, I have my right ears deaf. Okay? Well, you know from the word of knowledge that it's, we already know that it's God's will to heal. But the word of knowledge makes that very clear that God wants to heal this condition at this moment. So, you know, and just say, so, ear, I command you to open up in Jesus' name. Right? You know, you don't have to pray. You know, you can. Father, open this ear. But command that to open up. It's, it's, uh, it's very appropriate when a word of knowledge has been given indicating that God wants to heal that person at that moment. Okay? Or if you've tried, let's say you started with a petition. Okay? Holy Spirit, we ask you to touch Frank's back. Okay? And you're not getting anywhere. Okay? Uh, say, Father, or <laughs> I command this back to be healed in Jesus' name. Right? That, that's very appropriate to use. Okay? So those are the two types of prayer. There's petition and command. All right? Now, let's talk about prayer ministry. You've, you've interviewed the per person. You, you know you're going to use a command or a petition. And so you actually begin to do the prayer ministry. Okay? Now, first of all, just a couple of very practical things. Um, use a catcher. Okay? If, um, <laughs> yeah, if you're standing... Now, I know when we do prayer rooms here, when we do healing rooms... You know, people are seated in a circle. And so, um, you know, that's cool. That's important to do. But if, you're, if people are coming and standing in front of you, please, please, please use a catcher. Okay? Um, it's not more spiritual if someone falls out. Um, it, it, if so, don't, don't believe the charismatic myth that if someone falls out, they won't get hurt. Right? We've, well, I've seen people get hurt. Okay? Um, you know, so so use a catcher. Don't, or, or if you don't have a catcher, get them in a chair. Okay, doesn't guarantee that they won't get knocked out of a chair. <laughs> We've had that happen, right? When when a lady, it was actually Dean's daughter. We had her seated because her bones were so brittle, and Holy Spirit came in such power that it knocked her out of the chair. And that's, that's a long story. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I have lots of, we all have questions about that, but it's an, it was an interesting moment. So, um, so as you get ready to pray, um, you know, here's, here's what Randy, Dr. Randy Clark wrote. He said, I pray, come Holy Spirit and touch John Doe, right? Show us where to start praying for healing. Come and touch his body. So ask the Holy Spirit to come and begin to touch that person. Right? The Holy Spirit's here. right? He's present, but ask him to come and start touching that person and, and, and giving insight. Okay. Another thing that's important when you're praying for someone, keep your eyes open. Okay. So that when you're praying, you can see what the Holy Spirit's doing, okay? Um, you can see how the person's reacting. If you're standing up, if they start to fall, and obviously if you're the person praying or the catcher, you need to be aware of what's happening. Um, or, uh, <laughs> very appropriate is in the month we talk about deliverance, if a demon manifests through the person, uh, you need to be aware. Because that... the, the might try to wallop you, you know, and you want to see that coming. So, you know, if you keep your eyes open, e even if it's with the eyes of the Spirit, you'll start seeing what's happening on that person. You'll start 
seeing how Holy Spirit's moving. So, so keep your eyes open. Okay. Um, also, preparing the person to receive when you pray is also important. Okay. Now, ask the person not to pray along with you, but to focus on his or her body and to let you know what happens as as what happens as you pray. Okay. And um, you know, I, I know we've all been there when we've been praying for someone and they're praying really loudly in tongues. Okay. You might just say, hey, you know, just just and be nice about it. Right? Hey, shut up. Quit your praying in tongues. Don't don't do that, right? You can ask them in the beginning, listen, I just want you to receive. I just want you to be quiet. You don't pray. Let us pray. And you focus on what the Lord's doing. Okay? So you can be aware, you know. Um, and you know what? If they still do it anyway, don't get hung up on it. It's okay. Right? <laughs> um, and instruct them to pay attention to what happens. Like if they have pain and you're praying for them and they have pain... Um, you know, you might a even ask them, hey, what's your pain level right now? And, oh, I'm at a seven. And you say, well, pay, uh, pay attention to what's happening to your pain. If that goes down, if that, or it goes up, right? <laughs> pay attention to your pain level. Um, also, you might ask them to let you know if any physical manifestations start happening. You know, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm, uh, I'm getting hot all over. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting warm, or it feels like there's electricity, you know, or there's heat in my back where where there's been pain. Those are really good signs. Okay, and I can remember years ago um, when I was in, I think it was the first Global Awakening conference that I ever went to, and um, they called out. Um, blood diseases as a word of knowledge. I think it was Bill Johnson and and I've had problems with gout and so what happens with gout is uric acid doesn't um, process out of your body correctly and so you have, it's like arthritis and your joints swell and all that and so um, that was close enough for me if someone said blood disease so I, I'm like yeah, God, it's close enough. It involves my blood, you know. So, and as I stood up, what happened was it felt like cold heat. It started around my head. It was the strangest thing. And um, it went, it, and it moved down my body. And so, what happened? My faith increased. Greatly, I mean, I was just like, oh, I'd never felt that before. It was like that icy hot, you know. And um, now, I've had some gout outbreaks since then, but I went probably for, at that point, I was having one every three or four months, and I went over two years without having anything. Now, I, I still, now I notice still, uh, I'm better, but if I get stressed. <laughs> or if I eat what I'm not supposed to eat is when I have trouble. Or if a major cold front blows in. You know, I don't understand all that, but I'm, I'm still believing, even though I've improved, I'm still believing for total healing, but I know that night something started happening. Amen. So, you know, instruct people to pay attention to physical manifestations happen. Okay? Now, when you're doing your prayer ministry, and this is important, this is not the time to give advice or preach. Okay? Um, don't, don't do it in the prayer ministry. Okay? Even when we're doing healing rooms here, um, if you're on a healing team, you know, unless, uh, and I, I don't want to be legalistic and say never do it, but on Saturday when we have healing rooms, uh, and we have healing teams. We also have prophetic teams, okay? And so unless Holy Spirit gives you a word of knowledge or something, don't prophesy and don't preach and don't give advice, okay? Because um, we've already received word that um, a lot of people are coming this Saturday. And uh, last time when we did this, for the two hours that we ministered, 
our, the four teams that we had were nonstop and to the point that uh, my wife Jamie, who is a great administrator, was walking by like going, you're taking too long on the prophetic team, right? And because we were trying to limit to eight minutes, well, we went like 20 minutes, okay, with one person. So for, for healing teams, people on this Saturday, people are going to get prophetic ministry. Don't focus on that, okay? Don't start giving them health advice, you know. Don't tell them, well, if, you know, honey, if, if you would stop eating peanuts and drinking beer, your gout would get better. <laughs> you know, you don't know. I have, like I said, I've struggled with gout, and I don't drink beer, <laughs> right? So don't give advice, okay? Now, again, pray in the name of Jesus, right? We've already talked about that, but pray in the name of Jesus. Um, and if something begins to happen, okay, thank Jesus for what he's doing, okay, right? Someone's like, oh, my gosh, you know, where my back has been in pain, suddenly it's just, it's hot all over my back. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we just thank you for what you're doing. And we ask it to increase right now, Lord. More, Lord, let this increase. Oh, we'll just, Lord, we command all back pain go in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you're doing. And remain focused on that area as long as something's happening, okay? Um, several years ago, it's probably been... Um, Gosh, I bet it's been at least four years ago. I was in Mexico um, with Steve Wilson. Many of you know Steve Wilson. And we were praying for someone that uh, from, had a birth defect, and literally there was no ear. And there was just a hole. And so they came forward for prayer, and that's one of those moments when you're like, ah, I didn't get the headache, right? <laughs> I got the deaf ear that's not even there. And um, so we started praying for this person, and through the translator, they told us that the ear got really, really hot in that area. And so we're praying, and Steve, Steve passes by, and I'm like, Steve, the, the area where their ear is supposed to be, it's really hot. And he's like, he's like, keep praying as long as it's doing that. Keep focusing on it. Now, you know, we didn't see a total breakthrough. You know, an ear didn't form. Um, I don't know if I don't even remember if they if healing increased. I don't I don't think the hearing got better, but there was something happening. Okay, so as long as that's happening, really focus on that. Okay, um, don't move on. Okay. Now, during prayer, you you might become aware that the person receiving ministry might need to forgive someone. Okay. Now, be, if you become aware of this, be very tactful. Okay. Well, the Lord just showed me that you're in for unforgiveness. And until you get it right, you're going to be sick. Right? No, be kind. You know. Um, so here, here's a quote from Dr. Randy Clark. Never accuse the person confrontationally of causing his condition by his sin. It is seldom helpful, and you may be wrong. Hello? You could be wrong, believe it or not, right? And here's a, here's a key point. General accusations of sin are often destructive and probably are from the enemy. Okay? Now, if God shows you something like, you know, the Lord's shown me that, you know, you need to forgive your ex-wife. And they're like, oh, how did you know? Right? And, and do it in kindness and humility and gently, okay? They're going to be open probably. But if you just say you're in sin, okay, they're going to be super offended, okay? We had this happen once here. And um, we had a ministry school student um, that was praying for a visitor, and told her that her sickness was a result of sin. And that visitor uh, had a family member in the church who shared with us that she had been devastated by this. And that it took her years to return to another service. 
Okay. Um, so when I found that out later, I was very, very, very unhappy. Okay. And what made it worse was I believe the person who was doing it knew exactly what they were doing and were attempting to stir up strife and division and cause trouble. Okay. That person did not graduate from the school. I'll just say that. Um, and they're not here, so don't or don't be like, is it Sister Samantha? Right? Don't don't try to figure that out. I'll tell you later afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, if you if you get results, and we've already kind of touched on this, but not complete healing, continue for as long as God is moving. Okay. And if God shows you that it's an issue of unforgiveness or something like that. Just have them repent. Lead them in a simple prayer of repentance and then try again. Okay? Now, here's another important point. Use your normal tone of voice. Okay? It is not necessary to shout or, loud or pray loudly during ministry. You're not more anointed as your voice gets louder. You don't have to take off your jacket and hit them with it. Okay? You don't need to do that, okay? Be very normal. You don't have to, in the name of Jesus, right? Just, just be normal, okay? Especially if you find yourself praying in a public place, right? You know, if, if you're drawing attention, um, you're probably going to embarrass the person. And if it's in a business, you may get kicked out. Right? We were doing treasure hunts once, and um, we had a team that, all descended on one person in Lowe's. And, you, you know, if you're praying for someone, you don't need nine or ten people huddled around them doing that uh, over in flooring, okay? And I'm, if I remember correctly, I caused a problem, and they asked them not to do it. So don't act weird or loud, okay? There's no reason to do that. Be normal. I mean, you're supernatural, but do it normally, okay, as much as possible. All right, so that's, that's the prayer ministry time, okay? Now, there, the next step is to stop and re-interview, okay? Now, during ministry, it may be necessary to get feedback if healing has not happened or is not progressing, okay? Now, let's turn, I've, I've listed here uh, Mark 8, 22 through 25 and let's let's just look at this okay so it says in the in beginning in verse 22 of mark 8 and they came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man to him and entreated him to touch him and taking the blind man by the hand he brought him out of the village and after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands upon him he asked him do you see anything and he looked up and he said, I see men, for I am seeing them like trees walking about. Then again he laid his hands upon his eyes, and he looked intently and was restored and began to see everything clearly. And he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. Okay. So Jesus, you know, in the course of praying for this person, he, he interviews him again as he's praying. And he's like, so do you see anything? And, and as you're praying, check the progress of what's happening. Okay, what's happening with your pain right now? Well, you know, it's getting better or it's getting worse or nothing's happening. Okay, that's not a lack of faith to do that. Okay, it's actually important to do that to see how it's progressing. Okay, so when Jesus asked the man in verse 28, do you see anything? He, the, the guy was regaining, he was getting a certain measure of healing, okay? Now, there, there's, you know, some extremes of word of faith, okay, that you can only pray one time and never again, okay? And, well, Jesus prayed more than once in this situation, right? I, I know some people in word of faith who just because they made a, conf made a confession or had... Um, Kenneth Hagin pray for them when he was alive 30 years ago, they're not going to ask for prayer again because they're standing in faith. Okay? And, and sometimes they'll, they'll miss it. Okay? Because often healing is perseverance. Okay? 
And, um, you know, I'm going to let people pray for me if I'm believing for something, right? Sometimes, sometimes faith is going in humility and having somebody pray for you, okay? So don't be afraid to continue praying, okay? It's not faith to pray once and never again, okay? Um, so Jesus prayed more than once. And, and he did not, another thing, he did not stop at one prayer when he didn't see results. When he prayed and the guy wasn't completely healed, he's like, well, this must not be the will of God. Right? <laughs> this must not be my will, right? <laughs> no, but he, he, he persevered in prayer, okay? Um, so, now, when you're re-interviewing, and you're re-interviewing not only to check progress, but if progress has stopped, okay? So the re-interview may reveal hindrances to healing that might be present, such as unforgiveness, okay, um, curses, um, occult involvement, um, or a need for deliverance because of a spirit of infirmity, okay? And you may ask some questions like, do any other of your family members have this condition? If you're like, yeah, all my siblings have it, you know, my parents had it, my, my grandparents had it. Well, there's probably some type of uh, familiar spirit or generational curse that's working, uh, and you may want to deal with that, okay? Uh, or the, here's a question that will open up a whole can of worms that we'll get into later if we have time. Is or has anyone in your family been involved in Freemasonry? Okay, because that often opens up all kinds of physical problems. Okay, or you know, you may um, you, you you're asking them, and we've touched on this already, but pain that increases or moves around may also be an indication that a spirit is present and should be cast out. And again, if that starts happening, you know, you know, again. You don't have to put on a show and don't let the Spirit put on a show, but command it to leave in the name of Jesus. Okay? Um, so here's, here's when to stop praying. Let's say you've prayed, you've seen a little bit of progress, or you haven't seen any progress. You can't get to, uh, get to the root of it maybe, but, or you have and something's happened. But here's when you stop praying. If the person <laughs> wants you to stop praying, you know, they're, they're like, Dude, I got to go. No, five more minutes, you know. No, don't pray for someone against their will, right? Or if the Holy Spirit tells you to stop. I mean, Holy Spirit may tell you to stop, you know, and, and you know, you can stop doing that at that point. Um, stop if you are not able to gain ground, Okay. And again, if you're not able to gain ground or if, or if you sense certain issues that maybe need to be dealt with, um, depending on the environment, like if you're, on a, uh, if you're in one of our prayer rooms and you, you know by the Spirit that um, there's some occult involvement or something like that going on, if possible, if you feel like you can do it in a, in a discreet manner, you might say, you know, we, we have a transformation center here, and if you need further ministry, you know, I mean, we were doing prophetic ministry the last time we had healing rooms, and this lady was like, hey, um, I want you to pray for my family member because I think she's ready for some deliverance, and so what did I do? I said, hey, you know we have a transformation center here if people want uh, more in-depth ministry, you know, because... There's only so much you can do in 8 to 10 to 15 minutes. And so I introduced this lady to Dwayne, you know, saying, hey, this is Dwayne Williams, you know, and he can do some extended ministry. Uh, you, you may run up into something like that, you know, and if, if you have the relationship and the means to do so, connect them to someone. You know, you're like, hey, you know, uh, so-and-so has does so-so ministry, whatever that may bring them into greater freedom. Amen. And then, always seek to encourage people's faith in love without condemnation. Okay? And, and you, you see, that's one thing that Jesus always did, you know. And, um, 
whatever faith they had, if they had great faith, if they didn't have any faith, or, you know, like, Lord, help my faith. And he's like, okay, you know, only believe. Jesus always, always encouraged people where they were. You know, he never was like, well, you got a lack of faith, dude, I'm sorry. You know, he didn't do that. Now, sometimes he rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith. Boys, I trained you better than this. Okay, what are you doing? All right? Uh, and, and he put it on them to, for them to grow in faith. But when people came to Jesus for ministry, he was always very affirming. And he always built their faith. Okay? And so we should do the same thing. All right? Okay. When you, when you finished the, the prayer ministry based on whatever's happened... Uh, then there's some post-prayer suggestions. Now, we see that there are times that Jesus did this. In John chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, Jesus gave instructions to a paralyzed man he had healed. And he instructed him with, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Right? Again, be careful how you do that. Right, if you're like, Marshall, dude, I know you got healed today, but, you know, if you don't start dipping, you might get lip cancer. Stop, right? <laughs> um, if people are healed, encourage them to thank God. I know that sounds so simple, but, you know, I mean, even Jesus, when he healed the lepers, how many he healed? Ten lepers and only one came back and thanked him. He's like, where are the other nine? Okay, I've observed that people are very much like that in healing ministry. <laughs> um, now, if the root cause was an afflicting spirit, warn them that the spirit may try to return, but that doesn't mean that the healing's been lost. Okay, So if you've, if you've dealt with an afflicting spirit, you've cast it out, just say, hey, just be prepared because this thing may try to come back to test and see if you're going to stand against it. Okay, So it may even try to come back and put symptoms on you. Okay, So just say, no, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. You can't come back. Okay, um, I, That happens a lot. Okay. And I, I'm no expert, but, you know, and, and this is why even my understanding is in like in the 1950s during some of the healing evangelists and some of the great tent revivals, uh, you know, people like Oral Roberts and A.A. Allen and some of those guys. I know some of them required, if you were going to receive prayer in the night services, they wanted you to get some teaching on how to keep your healing. Okay. And, um, you know, the enemy will try to put stuff back on you and you're like, yeah right I'm not healed it's all my imagination okay so don't come into agreement with that and teach people that okay all right now if the person was not completely healed encourage them to continue to receive prayer but again do not accuse them of sin or a lack of faith for healing okay Jesus always met people where they were and encouraged their faith okay um, another thing is encourage people that healing is often progressive. Okay, I, I know of people that have had a measure of healing. Maybe their hearing's improved. You know, or, or but you know, I, I don't understand why some people get immediately healed and some people don't. I, I don't understand that, but sometimes that happens. So encourage them in that way. Um, re recommend spiritual or scriptural passages. Or books that encourage faith, because those are always activities that build people's faith. Okay, you know if they're believing for something, and you're like, "Hey, you need to read, you know, um, this story or this account, or you know, go to Global Awakenings website and watch the video where the lady with the metal rod in her leg gets totally healed," you know, or watch people who you know, couldn't, he, couldn't bend over because of rods in their back. They're bending over, you know. Uh, go and watch those things, that, you know. Uh, and I've shown some of these things in school or in some in the school here in some of our services because you suddenly realize how big God is. 
Right. You suddenly realize that he's often so much bigger than we thought. Right. Because we're, we're trained not to believe in the church. Right. Uh, often, often when you pray for somebody and they get healed, what's the first thing they say? I don't believe it. Right. Because they're trained or they're, you know, or because so many of us have been raised to believe that these things don't happen anymore. You know, and, and or, you know, that they don't happen in America. We're trained in unbelief. We're, we're really good at being cynical and skeptical. So, you know, when you when you see some of these accounts, I mean, the first time I watched the DVD Finger of God. It's just like, oh my gosh, some of us have more faith in Satan to deceive us than we do in God to move, right? And are there counterfeits and fakes? Yes, but God's moving in such power, right? I, I can remember, you know, the, again, the first time I went to a Global Awakening Healing School in Abilene, Texas, and it may have actually been uh, the second school I was in where... Um, you know, so much metal was disappearing from people's bodies. And, you know, we saw a, a little boy who was legally blind read words off the wall. Right? And his mother just weeping. And his mother had a metal plate in her collarbone and she hadn't been able to move her neck around. And she's moving her neck around and her little boy who couldn't legally read, who couldn't read, is suddenly reading without his glasses off the wall because he'd been legally blind. And my paradigm was shaken. And I believed in healing and the miraculous. So, you know, you know, recommend people and for yourself. Right? Sit and listen to some interviews with Bill Johnson, Randy Clark, Heidi Baker, some of these people who are seeing amazing things happen. It really builds your faith. Okay? And uh, again, make sure as a minister of healing that you do everything in love. Okay? If you move in love, um, you know, even if someone doesn't get healed, um, they'll, if they feel that they're valued and loved, that goes a long, long way. I think one of the reasons even the healing rooms that we're doing here, why they're being successful is... There's such an amazing atmosphere when you come in. We, we've cultivated that. We cultivate it when people come in as they wait. Uh, you know, man, some people have just come up here just to soak because of the presence of God that's so manifest. You know, we want to create that atmosphere and that environment of love, okay? I have a closing quote here from uh, Dr. Bob Savell. And Bob has been one of my instructors in the seminary, and he pastors uh, Passion Church in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, he said, the, the ministries of the 12 and of the 70 were extensions of the ministry and authority of Jesus. These original disciples, disciples were forerunners of a discipleship movement based on the authority and miraculous power that Jesus gave to them and intended them to continue until his second coming. Okay? So that's us. He, we're extensions of the ministry of Jesus. And the five step prayer model is a very practical, loving way that you can pray for the sick. Amen? Amen. All right. So uh, let's stop there, Morgan. Now, tell me, list, someone, tell me the first step.